Justin Marshall joins us again. We've got so much rugby to talk about, but uh, just on a personal level, mate, uh, my youngest has just gone back to Otago. I know that you've sent your second one off and that it's a bloody wrench, isn't it? I mean, you walk around the house and you're thankful that the other kids are still there. And of course, you know, but you don't want to kind of, you know, shed any tears or act as though, oh, you're really upset because the little bastards are leaving. But, oh, it's such a life change, isn't it, mate? It is, mate. And um, I think you kind of view it two ways, really. One, that you hope that you've you've sent them off in a good space, um, that the, the 18 years that you've had a hold of them, they've schooled well, which they do if they're heading off to university. Uh, and they're good, polite people, and they get on with the rest of their lives. But you're right, when you come home to the house, it does leave an empty feeling. It makes you think, did you do enough with them? Did you um, sort of bat them away at times you, you, when you're too busy, when you could have been sort of helping out? But um, that's the way that life circle goes. But the good thing is, mate, they haven't gone to the other side of the world, so they're still reachable for both of us, aren't they? Which, yeah. Which is really good to know. Yeah, you're so right, though. I mean, that's kind of the empty feeling, I think. You sit there and you ask yourself, yeah. God, did I work too hard? Did I go and kick the ball when I should have kicked mm-hmm. the ball? I mean, all of those. Every parent asks these questions, mate. The other thing is is that we send them off to uni, Marshy, and they're doing degrees that, I don't know about you, mate, but I just look at the ex misses and go, thank God you had a brain love, because really the kind of topics that they decide to study, they didn't come from this side of the microphone. Oh, you'll laugh, mate, because my other son is at Lincoln. He rang and he was talking on speakerphone about uh, he had to choose a, a few subjects to go in with his degree um, and how he was going to piece them together. And he said, geez, is Dad still there? He hasn't spoken for 15 minutes. And I said, well, you two might as well have been speaking Japanese, so I've just switched off until this conversation's <laughs> over, so I haven't got a clue either. <laughs> oh, so all the parents out there are listening, hey, look, we're thinking of you, because, yeah, it is. It's a, it's a real yeah. wrench, but as you say, and I love that comment, mate, you know, we're putting young men into the world. I just want them to be polite. I want them to be courteous. I want them to be men, and by yeah. that I mean actually have, you know, good code inside, which says that you look after the girls, you look after your mates, and you're not a dickhead. You're bang on, Marty, and, and uh, you feel proud that if, you could, if you've given them that and uh, they can walk in that stature, you've done a good job. Um, he's ro- he's at Otago, mate, so he's rolling into O-Week, which bounces on to Otago versus the Blues on Saturday night in the zoo. So uh, quite a hefty in- introduction for him. <laughs> well, yeah, and look, and my my youngest will probably be alongside. I can tell you that um, it's best not to look at the photos from O-Week, mate, because, you know, you and you know what you and me got up to at that age? Well, the same stuff happens, mate. So we just – but, you know, you're talking about yep. that Super Rugby game. And, look, it's the perfect time to launch down there because they'll get a bloody big packed house, which will thrill, the, you know, everyone that goes, but especially the players. Because on opening weekend, if, 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 if I want one thing more than anything, mate, and I know it might sound a bit wishy-washy – I just want to see the crowds come out and I want to see the players walk out there, get a huge round of applause and actually people go and watch some rugby and just have some fun. Absolutely. And, and we're back to the original format of Super Rugby. We haven't got those New, Tele- uh, New Zealand teams ding-donging each other week to week, that repetitiveness. Um, even though we've got those great local derbies this weekend, we've equally got a much more balanced tournament. So people will get to see something quite a bit different than what we've seen in the last two years. So I encourage them to get out there um, and support uh, their, their franchise and support this tournament because I think it's going to be a good one. Um, absolutely, mate. And when I think of the Highlanders, we might as well hit that game first yeah. um, before the game on the Friday night. Um, you know, really, the Highlanders, they do need that big crowd. They need momentum. And, geez, you know, first game of the, the round, for me to say I feel it's a must win, you know, you don't usually say that till round eight or nine, but it is for them. I think they're the unknown... Uh, quantity they, they are the team that people are expecting will either sink or swim they need to start swimming um, really quickly on that first night with a big crowd so that they get that crowd regularly they're a team that's near on impossible to beat at home and they generate some real momentum because I fear if they get spanked on Saturday night it's only going to be downhill for them for the rest of the season. Yeah, look, you know, the 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 kind the, not the little brother franchise, but the the one that does struggle the most because try you know in terms of catchment, in terms of players, and in everything else. And so, you know, it's it as you say, it is it's all about momentum for them. When you look at that fixture, though, uh, I mean, it's not out of the realm at all that they can win that. But actually, I, you know, I look at the Hurricanes and I've got big raps on them this year. I, I don't know. I mean, I think that that, that natural, that, you know, they did they came bloody close last year. But that natural Chiefs Blues, uh, sorry, uh, Crusaders Blues dominance, I'm not quite sure is going to be there this year. And I hope that these other teams actually are thinking the same. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree. It would it would be really healthy to see a good competitive tournament. And, and we know the Blues will be competitive, the Crusaders will be competitive, the Hurricanes, the Highlanders, um, you know, equally the Chiefs are going to be massively competitive. But the Hurricanes and the Highlanders, if, if they can manage their um, injuries and, and make sure that they don't suffer too many problems with, with squad depth, they've got enough firepower to compete and they've got enough firepower to beat those other three sides. The, the problem for them is when you look at their squad, they don't have the depth and positions that those other three do, the Chiefs, the Crusaders and the Blues. So that's probably going to be a big part of the, the, the theory for them for the season, for their coaches, which would be trying to keep their players fresh and healthy. If they can do that, um, they're more than capable. Bit of a, I'm not really much of a cliche man, Marty, but I throw one out every now and then, and this one's well and truly worn, but I will throw it out there. It's a genuine banana skin, that one, for the Hurricanes, though. It'll be a real true test for them. Nothing worse than going to Perth at this time of the year. A uh, year it'll be bloody hot. And the Force, they're just a capable team, mate. They're, 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 they're one of those niggly teams that all of a sudden get their tails up and all, and all of a sudden you can find yourself in a, in a real fight. Yeah, I mean, also as far as the Blues are concerned, I, look, I love Dalton Papaletti's comments. I mean, he's so honest about it. That, that defeat last year, I hope it bloody hurts because you guys bottled it. You came out and you you got afraid in the headlights and you thought you were playing, a, you know, a big fi- you know final match with all the rah-rah around it. The Crusaders just came and punched in the face early and just actually, you know, completely told you what winning football is actually and winning football at that level is all about. So I love the fact that he said that they're hurting, which to me just adds so much more spice to this season because you guys have got something to prove. Getting there is not enough. you got to get there and win it. Yeah, you do. And that's what the, 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 the format is all about. And that's what every team themes on. So when they sit down and do their theming and their goal setting, it's not about winning a semi-final or making it to a final. It's about lifting that trophy and... and Getting to the big dance is, is a monumental feat because it's not an easy tournament. Um, but making sure that when you get there, uh, you're walking away with the goods is, is the key thing. So, yeah, they will be hurting. Um, the one positive for them, I guess, will be, you know, Leon's been um, in those situations before as a player, uh, mostly, um, and, and within the Crusaders as well, where he's won finals and lost finals. Uh, and he's gone on after a year losing a final with the Crusaders as a player to win one. So he knows the mentality of how you make that shift and take what you learnt out of that final to make sure it doesn't happen again. And if he's reinforcing that, and those Blues players have learnt about that final and why they got it wrong, then there'll be a different uh, kettle of fish come finals time this year. Justin Marshall is with us, 81 Test All Blacks, and of course he'll be calling it all throughout the Super Rugby Pacific on Sky. We had Razor on the program yesterday. God, he's a fascinating man to talk to, mate. I could interview this guy for hours. I wish I could get him in the studio, sit him down for an hour. Because what I really wanted to ask him about, and it was, we're just like, you know, how do you motivate the motivator for a start? How does he keep refreshing himself? And also, just what does he look for when he when he looks at a player? How what does he look for to say you can be a crusader? And you'll know about this man. Some of the things that he said, you know, like he you know he wants guys turning up in the morning, no sleep in your eyes. You've had a shower, you've done your hair, you're looking smart. He said these are little things that he looks for, and I just thought, well, that's just absolutely amazing because what he's actually saying is, I want you to be on your game. I don't want you to think that you have this by right. The privileges you turn up, you're looking good right from the start. You know, it's just something that I haven't heard from any other coach. And that's the key to raise a success. Uh, I think the other thing that is very evident when you hear him talk, and you obviously have Marty, um, he's passionate about it, but he actually gives a shit. He cares. Yeah. He cares about that jersey. He cares about the legacy. He did as a player. He, he wore every single uh, game that he played and he pulled on that jersey. He wore it right on the in, from the inside of his heart because... That's the type of crusader as he is. He's installed a lot of the old traditions that the crusaders had back in the day when he played. He's taught them about where that team came from to where it is now. And it's not about back to back to back to back to back for him. It's about there's a whole there's, there's, there's new players coming into that crusaders environment this year who have not tasted any success whatsoever in their rugby careers. He wants them to train like crusaders. He wants them to learn like crusaders. And eventually he wants them to win. He wants to send them. If this is his last year or their last year of rugby that that they play for various circumstances, they get the experience that every crusader should get. And nobody gets that by right. It only comes with hard work. 
Justin, in terms of the All Blacks, in terms of what you're looking at and what what do you want to see from the players? You know, it's 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 not like the All Blacks got a clean slate. We've obviously got a hell of a lot of names, which you know, injury injury, you know, let's hopes you know they they everyone survives intact are going to be rock solid in that team. What are you looking at though, in terms of what you want to see from every single player in the, in in our Super Rugby? Is it aspiring to be in that World Cup squad? I think it is, and I very much hope the messaging is around um, making sure that none of those current All Blacks, regardless of where they sit uh, on the pedestal, are complacent about being picked in that side. Very much in my mindset, as I mentioned to you last week, I feel that we we need to make a significant step in showing the rest of the world that we uh, have something different in our arsenal to attack them with and, and go back to some of our strengths. And to do that, it'll be probably making some micro or maybe some macro changes in the personnel that we've got because we need certain players showing the opposition, particularly defensively, that we can attack them in a different way because what we are doing now, even though, yes, we're still breaking teams apart, we're not doing it consistently enough and we're not doing it well enough to win us test matches. So that means that every player out there, if they show the coaches something completely different, an extreme uh, extreme offloading game, that we haven't seen since Sonny Bill Williams, that all, all of a sudden opens up some opportunities or just a really hard, big, strong ball carrier, someone like Thomas Umanga Jensen, who literally steamrolls three defenders. Those sorts of players have got to come into the mix and into the thinking. The world is the oyster for every super rugby player out there. They are all in the spotlight, I believe. I think Hook is the one position, mate. I mean, we've got a young lad at Hawks Bay. So we've got oh, yeah, Omura as far as the Hurricanes are concerned. But getting a big bullocking guy that I know, look, Dane Coles was that guy, um, a bit, and Cody was that guy. I'm not sure whether they're, they're at the peak of their powers. I'd love to be proved wrong on that. But again, you know, I, I also I look at that. I look at number six, and I'm also hoping that you're thinking the same way as me that. I want to see combinations, and that doesn't mean that they're proven combinations. Make a combination, get a combination, and, and actually prove to the selectors that you put you two together in the team and you can do it. Very good point. And I think of a lot of the combinations that are going to be going around the country, and I know that Alex Nankerville is moving on, but there's a possibility him and Anton Leonard Brown will be teaming up in the centres. You've got two of us, Sheik and Rico Yuani at the Blues. You've got David Harvey and possibly Jack Goodhue at the Crusaders. Um, you, you've got plenty of options out there for players to formulate combinations, to work together in synergy and show that they can do that and do that with a real force that makes them be, uh, I guess, recognised by the, the selectors as a combo that could go into uh, into battle together. And, um, you know, that, that goes across the board. A loose forward trio working in sync, you know, look at, uh, to a degree, how, how does Cullen Grace and Ethan Blackadder work together at the Crusaders? Is it a combination that'll work. Um, there, there are so many dynamics that we've got and combos are pivotal in that. Yeah, back three as well, I'm thinking as well, you know, because, you yeah. know, I go back to 2011 and, you know, the fact that they picked those three, they picked Corey and they picked Israel and they and they, and they and they picked Richard and they and they played them together as a three. I mean, this is where I think that they're, you know, if you're a super rugby player at the moment, I mean, look, the world's your oyster in terms of this particular tournament with what is going on at the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely it is. And I certainly feel when we when we look at uh, how predictable we've been um, in the in the past couple of years, uh, I, I just feel I always go back to it, Marty. And and I remember being really excited when I spoke to you. I was standing in the Sand and Sun Mall in South Africa in Johannesburg after the Alice Park test, test match in Alice Park, and I said to you, mate, that test match like no other in quite a long time has filled me with massive encouragement. The the want to play from all parts of the field really uh, warmed my heart. It, it meant that a, a predictable side went out there and played unpredictably. They simply ran South Africa off their feet. They were subbing players in the 35th minute. Yeah. They were that knackered. Yeah. And I thought, OK, here we go. This is where we want to go. We're prepared to attack from here. And Wayne Smith said the best place to attack when he was coaching me is from inside your own 22. Because they're going to sit three or four players hanging back waiting for you to kick which narrows their defensive line. It completely takes players out of the mix. And you can open them up from there, and then they're scrambling backwards for 80 minutes. But then we went to Christchurch and went insular Siller again. Yeah. So, you know, what you need is expressive players off the back of your point, combinations in the back three that have got the, the want to attack and, and the mindset that it doesn't matter where it is from, that they've got the licence to thrill. And if we can do that, we've got so much talent here. 
that we could really open up the game and, and show the world something different and go back to what we're good at, which is playing instinctively. No, I totally agree with you, mate. And look, I just think that, you know, the All Blacks, I mean, if we want to win the World Cup, we can't win it by being Ireland. We can't win it by playing England kind of rugby. We can't be and try and be the Not best South game. Africa. You know, we've got to be the best of us. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that running those yuppies off their feet in Joburg. Mate, I just said, just, it just popped into my head. 1996 and the history making tour in that. And I think it was Oz Durant was on the ground in one of the first two tests and he was so tired. And Zinzan said, Do you want a pillow, mate? I just was one of the best sledges <laughs> ever, right? Do you want a pillow? Yeah, absolutely. The only things that he wouldn't want to be doing would be after that test match meeting up with him in an elevator because I can tell you what. He makes an elevator feel like it's only made for one person, not two. That's for sure. <laughs>